All right, so I'm going to switch to the other camera and bring out a sheet of bindle paper. And I'm going to go ahead and fold the paper as you follow along. So if you have your notes, uh, it might be helpful to have that, that page opened so that you can see the diagram because the diagram is going to go away now. So as far as bindle paper, go, paper goes, um, you'll see that it takes a little effort to fold these. And uh, so sometimes what we do is when we have a little downtime at the station is we get out some bindle paper and pre-fold a bunch of them and put them into a uh, Ziploc bag. Now, as you do that, you want to use your gloves because you don't want to be putting your DNA all over the bindle paper. Of course, if you were pre-folding bindle paper to have available um, as you uh, work, uh, at the scene, then fold them using gloves. All right, so the first thing you're gonna do is take the bindle paper, position it like a diamond here. And then you're going to, so hopefully you're following along, you're gonna take the paper and you're gonna fold it up like so. Now I'm not at the best angle because of the camera. I'm kind of looking at an odd angle here. So sometimes I don't fold it the way I like. That's not perfect. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I like it to be pretty. All right, so you fold it into a triangle like that. Now, the next thing you do is you take one of the corners, I usually just take the right-hand corner, and you fold it over so that it's almost one-third of the way over. So, it's, it, so when you fold these, it's almost one-third, but just a shy of that. All right, so I'm gonna fold it like so. I'll give you a moment in case you're doing that along with me. Now, the next thing I need to do is fold this corner over. And what I want to look for is to make the top here, the, what I would call the shoulders, even. So I want these two pieces right here, the two shoulders, to be somewhat even. All right. So now I have folded the, folded like so. The next thing you do is you open up your first fold, the flap here, so that you can put the second piece into that fold. So I hope you, you saw what I did there. So that goes in there to secure it. Now the next thing I do, a little contrary to what you see on the, on the diagram, is I go ahead and I fold the bottom up to the shoulders. Now if I was folding these to put in a Ziploc bag, I might just stop right where I was before doing this and just put them all in the package and then at the scene, I would do this step. Or you might just fold them all the way. It's really up to you how you like it. And then this top part, I'm going to take it and fold it down over the top here. Now, if you did this right, the point should come right to the base. All right, now I have fully folded my bindle. Now I can open it back up to this point. And there's one of two ways you can use it to put evidence to secure evidence. One is to just open these two top flaps here so that now you have, it looks like a bird, uh, a baby bird wanting to be fed. <laughs> uh, and so now you can put your evidence, whether it's the tip of a swab or it's uh, pieces of glass, a cartridge case, a bullet fragment, you just drop it in there you make sure it goes all the way to the bottom and then you close it up. So my evidence would be down here and you fold this back up and then you take this flap that you had and see this opening here? You stick it in there and now it is secure.
whatever you have in there is not going to fall out. You don't have to put tape on this. You're done. Whatever's in here is secure. And then this just goes into an envelope. Now, the other way you can put your evidence into a, a bindle that you folded is once you have fold the bindle, unfold it completely. Now it's open like this. You can easily put your evidence right in here because we want it to be in the bottom. Fold it, uh, unfold it, put it all right there, and then you just carefully fold it back up. And you're all done. So that is the correct procedure for folding a bindle.